First and foremost, I'd like to give all thanks and praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you true, sincere brethren out there, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with this truth, and to the rest of the church who believe as well, including you few women. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him enduring and going to that cross, None of this would even be possible whatsoever, okay? So I think through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, the lesson I want to go into today is how you devils primarily and the rest of you heathen nations, you're going into hardcore slavery under the nation of Israel. Now, who are the nation of Israel according in, in today's time? The Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Today, you may know us as the Negroes, the West Indians, the Haitians, the Dominicans, the Guatemalans, the Puerto Ricans, the Cubans, the North American Indians, the Seminole Indians, the Argentinians, the Colombians, and the Mexicans. Okay, we are the biblical Israelites. If you're one of those people, according to your father's genetic line, you are indeed an Israelite. And you also have confusion of faces out there, which means you'll have Israelites who may not look like any of these people, but based off of their father's line, they are yet of Jacob. This isn't about skin complexion or how woolly your hair is. This is about whether or not your seed line goes back to Jacob, okay? But nevertheless, let's start off this lesson in the book of Jeremiah. Three and verse 18. In those days, the house of Judah being the southern kingdom, the house of Judah is the Negroes, West Indians and Haitians. The biblical names is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay? In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. And that's going into the northern kingdom. So the house of Israel is, today, you'll know, you'll know them as Dominicans, Guatemalans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, North American Indians, Seminole Indians, Argentinians, Colombians, and Mexicans. But their biblical nationality, which is indeed their real nationality, are Simeon, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, and Issachar. Okay? And they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. So we're going to be delivered out of the land of the north. Speaking of North America. Okay, all the tribes, all 12 tribes are here in North America right now. Although you have Israelites dispersed throughout the whole earth, according to James 1 and 1. In fact, let me just grab that right quick. But you have all the 12 tribes here in America right now. This is James 1 and 1. James, a servant of God, and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So the 12 tribes have been scattered throughout the whole earth, okay? But here in Babylon, you have all 12 tribes, from the Negroes all the way down to the so-called Mexicans, all right? So when Yahweh Shai returns with the holy angels, we are going to be found here still in captivity. And the fact that our people have not been free, have not been set free, so to speak, you might think you're free, but that's because you've been mentally trapped by Esau's system, by being in the pit of this devil. You think that you're free, all because you can walk outside of your house and hop in your car and drive to the grocery store, okay? But that's not freedom. Okay? You don't know who you are. You don't know who your biblical nationality is. You can't even go apply for a job and when it asks your nationality or your race, you can't put your computer, you can't put your professor, you can't put that you're from a NASA. Okay? Why? Because you are not free. We are still under the hands of our oppressors. So here in North America, where we are going to be delivered in other parts of the world, 
Well, right now, let's just focus on North America, here in Babylon. Ever since the Negro was brought here in slavery, we've been destroyed. All of the evil things that have been done to us still shows today with how our people carry themselves. The fact that you see a lot of young Negro males walking around with their pants hanging off of their ass. That's an effeminate nature. Back in slavery, Esau used to butt break our men to effeminize them, to turn them into homosexuals, into sodomites, because masculinity to the devil is a threat. Because they know if we rise up as men, we're not going to be in this docile, this submissive state of mind that we're in today. That's where you get the elect of the nation of Israel. We're waking up to our true identity. We're waking up back to our masculinity, okay? So, going back to the book of Jeremiah. 3 and 18, in those days, the house of Judah shall walk in the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. So we're going to be delivered out of North America. All the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be delivered out of North America. Why? Because we were never set free. Even when you look at this, uh, the Northern Kingdom, all right, it wasn't just the North American Indian. You had Reuben here, all right? You had Ephraim going into the uh, Seminole Indians, going into the Puerto Ricans. Issachar going into the, the so-called Mexicans, they were already here. But see, the so-called white man, he came over here, totally destroyed you, took over your land, colonized everything here, separated you from your brethren, told you that you were less than nothing, called you an alien, an illegal alien at that, now you're subject to payments, okay? But really, it goes back to a couple of things. First of all, the Northern Kingdom, you should not have trusted your enemy. You should not have put your, your trust in the so-called white men. Secondly, you came over here to serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and to keep the commandments, and yet again, you went off and did all sorts of wickedness. So the Lord raised up the so-called white man to come over here and to bring you down. Going back to the Renaissance era, around 1492, when Cristobal Colon was sanctioned through the spirit, he was commissioned to come over here, all right? And that was all done in the spirit. So ever since then, you've been in slavery, okay? Then some years down the line, your brethren of the southern kingdom, Judah, was brought here in slavery and was never set free. You were brought down in slavery and was never set free. So it's Yahweh Shai himself and the holy angels who are going to be sent by the heavenly father to come and deliver us, man. Okay? Yahweh Shai is only waiting for the green light from the heavenly father, Yahweh. All right? the book of Ezekiel 39 I think it's Ezekiel 39 Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that they have borne their shame 
and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them, and none made them afraid. All right, so the Heavenly Father, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, he's going to turn back our captivity. The nation of Israel, he's going to deliver us from this captivity. He's going to literally pull us out of this captivity by what you call the chariots. Some may call them UFOs, but really they've been identified thousands of years ago, okay? They're called the chariots of Israel. That is our salvation. That is our way out of here. So the Southern and the Northern Kingdom together is going to come out of here in what the so-called white man likes to call the rapture, okay? But we're going to be taken up out of here through the vehicles known as chariots, okay? When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and you might say that America belongs to the so-called Native American or the Seminole Indian or the Mexican or the Puerto Rican, really, it's not your land no more. You know why? Because your enemies came and conquered you and took you down. So now it is officially your enemy's land. So you're going to be delivered from your enemy's land. Stop trying to fight for this land. Stop trying to get this land back. You need to let this place go. Because Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai has it set up to where this whole landmass, all the way from uh, New York, all the way across America to California, is going to be destroyed. Not one grass blade, not one little increment of concrete is going to be left on this place. This place is going to be left desolate. Okay, so let go of America, you so-called Native American men. Let go of America, you so-called Seminole Indian men. Let go of America, you so-called Puerto Rican. Let go of America, you so-called Mexican men. Okay, you gotta let this place go. Okay, because now this land has been totally polluted anyway. That's like somebody having a condom using the condom, and then they hand it over to you and say, here, you can have it back. It's polluted. It's disgusting. It's sick. This land is sick. It's disgusting. A lot of bloodshed has been done on this land. And the only way to cleanse it is for the missiles to be dropped on this place and wipe this place off the map. Okay? Ezekiel 39 and 28. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. So it was Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai who allowed us to be brought down into captivity. Okay? But now we're at the end of our captivity. So now there's really no purpose for America to still be here. That's why America is on the brink of destruction. America is at the end of her days. She's taking the last few breaths before the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, just gives her the flat line, man. This place ain't jumping like it used to be. It's not as great as it used to be. All right? The economy's collapsing. Okay? The uh, the economy is, is at a point where a lot of other nations, they don't look at this place the same way they used to. All right? America's like one big household, and this household is totally out of order. You think the men of these other nations who have their women in order want to come here just to allow their wives and their daughters to become sluts and hoes? They're tired of it, man. You have certain women from other nations trying to run away from their husbands to come here to America to have a sense of democracy or what they think is freedom. They're tired of it, man. All right, when you're dealing with men in Saudi Arabia, when you're dealing with men in Persia, when you're dealing with men in uh, uh, India, okay? They don't want to see their women be uh, turned into a bunch of hoes and sluts. So this place was looked at at one time as this great, marvelous place where you can invest, own a business. But you have certain heathens trying to flee this place because they see we're in the midst of World War III, okay? And you better believe that. America's finished, okay? Don't, don't be deceived 
because you still have a job and a car to drive into thinking that we have a lot of time left. At any given time, this society can come to a collapse. We don't know when, but we know we're in them times. Only the Heavenly Father knows when he's going to put a complete end to this place and shut it down, pull the plug, so to speak. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them anymore there. All right, so all the elect is going to be brought out of America and other parts of the world where they've been scattered. And we're going to be brought back to our own land. And guess who's going to build up our land? You heathens, man. <laughs> all the heathen, let me pull out the unimportant sign right quick. I hardly ever pull this out. But you see this unimportant sign? This is the heathen sign. All right? So the so-called white man, all the tribes of Ham are going into slavery. Uh, the Arabs of Ishmael, the Syrian, okay? The, uh, the East Indian, the Turks, the so-called Chinese, so-called Japanese, the Iranians, the so-called Russian, the Medes, all right? All the uh, the island heathens going to the South the South Pacific Islands to the uh, Samoans, okay? They're going into slavery. All the Assyrians are going into slavery. They're going to build up our kingdom, okay? So when we go back to our land, after that place catches missiles, the Heavenly Father is going to um, descend us back to this earth, and we're going to go around putting the rest of you nations into slavery outside of the places that were hit with missiles we're going to put chains around you man and we're going to gather up all the elites and we're going to have them dig pits to throw their bodies in and we're not going to give them a shovel or any sort of instrument to use they're going to use their fingertips and we're going to have them dig graves for all the dead bodies man the very second that we get our hands on them is the very second they're going into hardcore slavery, okay? And the things that we're speaking, that's also why they're trying to further this new world order because the elites of this world know that we're telling the truth, okay? They know it. Ezekiel 39 and 29, neither will I hide my face anymore from them for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. And that's why we're out here prophesying now. Because Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has poured out his spirit upon his men. Okay? And we're coming out here speaking the words of the Lord. So, for the elect of the nation of Israel, get ready for your deliverance. For all of you heathens out there, get ready for your captivity. Starting with the nation of Edom, uh, even more so starting with Amalek, the head tribe of Edom. Get ready for slavery. On down to the rest of you heathen nation. Okay? Let's go back to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 50 and verse 33. Thus said the Lord of hosts, or in other words saying the Lord of armies, because he's a man of war. The children of Israel, being the northern kingdom, and the children of Judah, being the southern kingdom, were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So here we are, present day, we're still in slavery. So how in the hell can you say you're free? Because you have a vehicle. You say you're free because you can work shoulder to shoulder with your enemies, man. You say you're free because you can send your, your children to a school that only teaches them Edomite supremacy, which today we call it white supremacy, but really it's Edomite supremacy, okay? The Negro, Latino, and Native American are oppressed together under this damn devil, the Edomite, the Edomite race, 
Okay? So Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai has to deliver us. And the simple fact that we're still in slavery, these devils are in trouble. Okay? Let's go to the book of Baruch 3 and 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So just like I read in Jeremiah, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were all pressed together. So what the hell are you talking about? We're different people. I can't stand you so-called um, cha-cha niggas out there who look down upon Judah, Benjamin, and Levi as if we ain't your people. I can't stand you cha-cha niggas who are darker than I am, but you look down upon Judah though, especially Judah. I hate you cha-cha niggas who act as if we're not going through this hell together, man. I hate you niggas of my tribe who look at the Northern Kingdom like they ain't your people because they might speak Spanish, which is not even their native tongue. Just like English ain't your native tongue, man. We've been conquered as a people. So we're speaking a bastard language. Yet a lot of the Northern Kingdom, they speaking that, that damn Spanish crap with pride as if it's their native tongue. Not knowing that they were brought down by the Spaniards, man. Okay, and you got the Negro speaking English with pride like it's his native tongue. When really we were brought down because of the, uh, 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 through the 13 colonies, I believe it is, man. Okay, so what in the hell is wrong with you tribes and thinking that we're different, seeing that the same race of people brought us down and separated us? That's why you have something called divide and conquer. Our people were divided, and after we were divided, we were conquered. That simple. Just like if you take one finger and you try to punch someone with it, you're going to break your finger. But with all five fingers, you can ball up your hand and make a fist. It's stronger together. But when it's divided, it's weaker. So the same with our people. When we're all together, we're like one big fist. But when we're separated, we're like one individual finger, man. Which could easily be broken. Okay? Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So yes... Negro, Latino, and Native American man. You are still a slave. Okay? Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. And I read to you in James 1 and 1 that the Israelites, the 12 tribes, have been scattered abroad throughout the earth. And to be subject to payments, whether it's child support, you got to pay your car note, you got to pay your water bill, you got to pay rent. All right? The list goes on. We're still subject to payments in this society one way or another because you're still in your captivity according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord our God hear Israel the commandments of life give ear to understand wisdom how happeneth it Israel that thou art in thine enemy's land that thou art waxen old in a strange country that thou art defiled with the dead okay we're defiled with the dead we've waxed old in a strange country man and you know, when somebody gets old, they're weak. So our people have become weak from being in this captivity for far too long. And because of that, now we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Uh, Hosea 4 and 6. But instead of quoting it, let me just read that. Hosea 4 and 6. For my people, being the Israelites, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And the Lord rejected us to the point that he allowed us to be thrown into hardcore slavery. That thou shalt be no prince to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And that's what happened. Okay? We're the children of our forefathers. We were thrown into slavery, man. Okay? And on top of that, the Lord will actually allow your, your your literal physical children to 
can't tell as well. When we were in slavery with chains of iron and uh, yokes of iron around our neck, I should say, and chains around us, okay? When we had uh, muzzles around our face like we were dogs so that we couldn't eat. When Esau had us grunting, we did all that, and we went through all that because we were destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You had our people being lynched and hung on trees, and then you had a group of Edomites who would just watch it happen, and they'd be smiling. None of them would cry a tear. You Israelites honestly think because the so-called white man could smile in your face today that he's your friend? Well, reality check. He smiled in your face when you was hung on a goddamn noose. When you were dead, he was smiling. So what's the difference? Don't be deceived by a smile, man. A smile means nothing, okay? So our people have been destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But nevertheless, although the Lord put us in this position, the so-called white man has to pay for what he's done to us. The fact that he furthered our affliction and he hasn't set us free, he's in trouble. Okay, let's go to the book of Exodus. You devils, man, you're in big trouble. All right? And Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai has hardened your heart the same way he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Okay? When Moses came and told him to let our people go, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai literally hardened his heart multiple times so that he wouldn't let us go so the Heavenly Father had an excuse to destroy him. And that's what he's doing to you Edomites. He's allowing the elite of you Edomites to have a hardened heart to us to not let us go so he has that much reason to destroy you and your race. Okay? Exodus 21 and 16. And he that still a man, okay, a Negro, Latino, and Native American, we were stolen. We're stolen property. We belong to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh and His Son. All right? And he that still a man and selleth him, and that's exactly what happened unto us. You sold us through auctioning blocks, man. Got a nigga here, a nigga here, a nigga, a nigga there, 35, 45, 50, 50, 55, 60, 60, 70. This nigga sold for however you did it, you know? But you stole us and then you sold us, man. And you can also find that account in Joel, how you sold us, which I might have to grab that next. All right? And he that still a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So when Yahweh Shai returns, where are we going to be found? In your hand, Esau. Because you took up this Bible, okay, you claim to follow behind this book, you're also going to be judged by this book. You're going to be judged by the law. So when the Heavenly Father raises up his son and the holy angels to come and deliver us, we're going to be found in your hand. So with that, you're going to be put to death because that's what the law says, okay? So you devils are in trouble, okay? Because you, you stole us and you sold us, all right? So let me grab that in Joel right quick. How you sold us at auctioning blocks, okay? All these wicked things that you devils did, the accounts are recorded in the scriptures. This is Joel 3. And I'll start at verse. Verse 3. Joel 3 and 3. And they have cast lots for my people and have gave a boy for an harlot and so the girl for wine that they might drink. And that's the wickedness of you devils, man. You take a young Israelite boy and sell him for a prostitute. You turn him into a sodomite. And then you take the young girls, you wouldn't even pop them. You just trade them off for wine. 
okay? That's twisted, man. So you got a lot to pay for, okay? And the simple fact that you cast lots on our people, that means you were selling our people, okay? The, the tribe of Judah, primarily speaking at this point of time, you were selling our people at auction blocks, man, okay? So goddamn you devils. You got to pay for all that, man. Yahweh God, Shimei Yahushai, is going to pay back you goddamn devils for everything that you've done. And guess what? Those same spirits that were then, they're here right now on this earth, man. Okay? Let me go to verse 6. Joel 3 and verse 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Going unto you Edomites. You Edomites are the Grecians. All right? That you might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where that you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. So you, you Hamites is going to pay, man. Okay? Because you are responsible for selling our people off to these damn Edomites who we are still uh, in captivity under to this very day, man. Okay? You Arabs, you got to go into slavery because going back to the Arab slave trade, you were trading us off. You had us under slavery, man. All right? So you devils and the rest of you heathens, you gonna pay, man. You going into slavery. Because according to the scriptures, because you touched the apple of the Lord's eye, all right, you done you done fucked up, to put it plain and straight. Okay, when you when you when you came against the children of Israel, you touched the apple of the Lord's eye. And that's where you messed up. All right? You done a lot of messed up things in your life, but you really messed up when you touched my people, when you touched the nation of Israel. All right, you're gonna pay for that. All right, for a thousand years, a thousand long, hardcore years of brutal slavery, man. We're not gonna be nice. All right, I'm gonna have it to where every last one of my slaves, they're not gonna have, uh, they're not gonna have any kind of, how can I put it? I'm not gonna give them any permission to walk. They're gonna crawl everywhere that they go, man. All right, and when they crawl, I'm gonna make sure there's a bunch of rocks for these Edomites because they done messed up this whole society by, by laying down concrete and cement and everything. I'm gonna have it to where I'm gonna have a bunch of rocks laid out for you devils. And the only way you gonna get around is crawling. And if you get on your feet, I'm gonna put you to death, man. I'm gonna torture you and put you to death. And I'm not fucking playing, all right? I can't stand you devils, man. I get tired of looking at your faces. All right, but you're going into slavery pretty soon. You belong in chains, okay? That's where you...